But what I'm looking to do here is demonstrate these rotary encoders. So I've got this little circuit here, mostly because I had this board already made up. Um, I thought it'd be nice just to modify it and fit up, fit these LEDs on. On the circuit diagram, um, it shows the encoder here. Here's the GPIO chip, the MCP23017. Um, this half of the chip, the GPA side, is connected to the encoder. GPB side is connected to the LEDs. Um, and the I squared C connection is made to the Arduino um, down here. Oh yeah, on the diagram you can see there's no pull-up resistors. Um, this is because the the uh, 2307 has uh, internal 100k resistors can be pulled up. So I've turned them on instead and that saves saves a lot of a lot of uh, hassle. I've set the display to give me uh, various values as I rotate the thing. Uh, the original binary value, uh, conversion into decimal and hex. Uh, the index, uh, I'll explain in a, in a bit with, with the software. And the direction, which is linked, index and direction are linked to uh, I can't really work out which way the, uh, the dial is turning. Let's look through the code. I've got the traditional include the libraries. I've used the Adafruit, Adafruit um, drivers uh, libraries. Um, I've set up my OLED screen. What else have we got? Uh, what I traditionally, what I like to do is split up my um, code into sections, into little files. So I've, this section is settings and then we've got various functions for the OLED screen and then the functions for the encoder. Uh, for me I just find that it simplifies everything. The setup does all the traditional setup things. Um, set up the display, set up the uh, we set up the MCP 23017 uh, set up the uh, the GP, GPA GPA for input uh, and I'm turning on the uh, internal pull-ups uh, the GPB which has all the LEDs on it is set up for output uh, I then go through a, like a, a countdown on the LEDs because I can uh, clear the display and then we, uh, I go and get the initial encoder values as a set out to be used uh, and then just these, this, this section sets up what I want to print out using the S printf. So each line is set up in a formatted as a formatted string, more or less. Um, and then I output that tree. And then I um, what does display encoder? Oh yeah, display encoder value uh, displays the LEDs. Then I go into a loop. And then the encoder value. It keeps on reading the encoder. Um, to do this properly, I think it's supposed to be using interrupts. So then, essentially, what I'm now doing, what I've got is I've got a little flag, uh, last value, um, that holds what what the value is. So essentially, I'm checking to see that the value has changed by comparing it with the last value, um, and then it just outputs it displays the LEDs um, set some of the settings and turns the, LED, the monitor LED uh, low and then loops again read encoder go to definition the read encoder function um, it reads the binary 8 bits into a byte uh, and outputs that byte from the encoder value and go to declaration and get encoder value and a bit shift the output is this byte here. A loop through all the um, the bits on the uh, GPA port uh, and read them one at a time, and then bit shift them into the read encoder. Uh, the encoder direction um, 
what I've got in my settings is this this array of values, uh, and each one represents uh, a position on the encoder. By looking in the data sheet, you can see that there are a number. There's a, a lookup table actually described. Um, the lookup table only really works um, when you've actually got the the encoder set up properly. Um, by looking on my circuit diagram, I can you can see that I've connected one to zero, two to one, three to two, four to three, and so on, all the way up. Um, if I connected them in a different order, I would get a different binary value. Oh yeah, I've got an encoder set up encoder values. When if I wanted to like reset the encoder or set it up again, um, I run this little. Uh, I just uncomment out this com the the thing in setting. I'm oh, sorry, no, in main. Use that to capture the. Um, the encoder values as they go through. Right, to work out the direction, um, because I've got this lookup table with the values in it, I can now go through to um, back to my encoder functions. Uh, essentially all it does is it, it knows the value of the given thing, but it doesn't know where that value is in the scheme of things it doesn't know where the so it's got the binary value it's converted it to a byte but it doesn't actually know where that byte is in relation to um, where it is in the rotation as it were in the 360 degrees this little loop uh, it, it loops through the index and finds the position in the index where it is and then exits uh, then I've got a couple of little these couple of here these two here are boundary checks so when you go through your 360 degrees, you go all the way through. Uh, so you go back to the beginning, uh, back to zero, or back to 360, or whatever, or 128, actually. So the direction then is true is clockwise, uh, false is anti-clockwise. So um, now, let's take one apart. Ooh. Right, so cut the lugs off. Oh, so. One track, one central track, and a number of positions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And underneath there, we have not quite a fit under the mark, so, but we have. Contacts. Oh, let's see. Uh, yeah. Contacts. Two, four, six, eight. Eight contacts at different spacings. Ooh, some gooey stuff. Um, so I assume. Get the machine that goes deep. Central thing here. Oh, I should make sure I get on something on screen. So central, center, contact, and so on. Hmm. Um, yeah. These look like they're arranged. They've been scientifically arranged. They've been arranged scientifically. <laughs> so that, that caps there. Those, their spacing is obviously deliberate. Oh, I'm not going to work out what's what. There's remarkably little to it, isn't there? These are the spring contacts which, which contact between the 
this the common and the uh, and the con and the, the pin bridge that gap. So these 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 gaps. I suppose they're to get the binary code out um, for each position. This each of these will uh, either be on a contact or in a or in a space. And that's how they've been arranged on this. We'll look under the microscope to see that they've like been glued in. Oh, they've been a lot there. They've been melted, melt heat, heat sealed in. Oh, as you expect, it's slightly more complicated, but quite clearly than that. Oh, well, there you go. Inside a rotary switch, or oh, an absolute inside an absolute contacting encoder. Um, thank you.